Let's do some news. Welcome everybody. Today's date is February 1st, 2019. My name is Mike B. I am joined today by Chet, the lovely Chet here. And we have some news to talk about. Lots and lots of delicious news. Some of it is some throwback news. We have some throwback news today. We're going to be throwing it back to way back last week when we talked about things. Where we talk about those things again, briefly. And then we have other things. That we're going to talk about as well. Also in today's episode, stuff, discussion, and things. Welcome everybody. Just news with just me and just uh, just chat. So to get things uh, stuff, I know. Don't get too excited. Don't get too excited. Just some stuff. It's just some stuff. So first off, let's do a <laughs> let's do a follow up. Let's go way back in time to January, end of January. Last week's episode of Just News, we talked a little bit about, was it last week? Maybe it was two weeks ago. Shit. Man, I'm really bad at this time travel stuff. Uh, we talked about the new uh, Alpha Star DeepMind AI and how it played some StarCraft II, 200 years of StarCraft II, uh, and then they pit it against uh, some professional StarCraft II players. And we talked about it last week. It had just happened. So maybe it was like two weeks ago. Um, it had just, when we talked about it, it had just happened. Uh, so it was exciting and we were like, whoa, it's crazy. And wow, when, what the fuck was that? Anyways, so we, <laughs> and so we, uh, we were all just kind of like, wow, this is crazy. We knew that there were some quirks. We knew there was some quirks. It's like, okay, lower, a excuse me, lower APM, but it's all, it's an efficient APM. He's not making like useless clicks. Okay. In StarCraft 2, you make a whole bunch of like random clicks sometimes when you're like moving shit around, right? Uh, and that's what a regular player will do. The AI is obviously not going to do that because why? There's no, there's no reason, no point to. Every single one of its clicks is going to be uh, uh, for a purpose, not random. Um, also, its clicking efficiency or like its micro is insane. Now, let's go ahead. There's actually a video uh, made by... Uh, it's analysis by YouTuber Brown Bear and Brown Bear. He goes into extreme detail talking about it's actually really informative, actually pretty cool to watch. Uh, but he actually goes through and he's playing this back at like 25 percent speed uh, and he's analyzing the way that the AI is microwing things. So in this example here, I should go back. I just I just I picked a random timestamp here, but I know this. I've seen this video like three times now. So I'm <laughs> kind of picking up on it. So. Right here, just take a look at, he's flying these phoenixes around, right? These guys right here. And he's going to basically fly them in and then he's going to micro them back as they get low on shields and low on health, right? And you'll see he basically does it with like, this is the AI doing it, right? He, go, he rotates them out perfectly, perfectly. And he ends up using these four, uh, four phoenixes to basically push back uh, the, the, uh, the, human, the, the human player here, um, uh, Mana in this case. And so this is just like one example of many where the micro is... Uh, is is un un inhuman, I uh, in terms of how good it is, and so these are things that you have to take into account. And when you talk about you know deep mind, uh, or when deep mind talks about uh, you know it, it's you know they oh they they um they scaled it back a little bit to make it more fair and everything. It turns out it's not entirely that fair. Now also the APM, they said that the average APM was lower than the uh, the StarCraft two players, uh, the, the the human players uh, APM or in general, the human player's APM, uh, but it peaked at much higher, at much higher than the human players. So it still actually was pushing an inhuman amount of clicks uh, across the entire game board. So what it saw was basically, it doesn't move a screen around. You know, we had like, we basically rate players on like screens per minute, actions per minute and everything, like how quickly they move the screen around and all that. Uh, well, the AI didn't have to do that because it saw the entire game board in all but the last match where Mana did end up beating him. And it was because it didn't have that perspective of being able to see the entire board at once. Mind you, it doesn't see through Fog of War, all right? Uh, but it's because of that uh, disadvantage of not being able to see that in the final match against Mana, Mana was able to defeat him using like a 20 year old uh, uh, build strategy. Uh, <laughs> but one thing, but there's good news though. Good news uh, is that, yeah, it's not all bad. The uh, oversaturation, Thing that uh, uh, builds that the uh, that that the AI did, where it basically built a ton of probes to mine much more than the average player would. Uh, 
actually turned out to be a good thing. It was like, so, you know, in this analysis here, he goes over and he basically says, yo, yeah, that's actually, it's true. You actually make a shitload of money. Um, but also what's interesting too is the AI could eventually be help, uh, help test the meta really for the game. And this is something that doesn't really exist anywhere else. Uh, where, well, not that we know of because AI is still kind of in development, right? Uh, where what Blizzard could do, and this is talked about in Brown Bear's video here, uh, what Blizzard could do is basically take a build or patch notes, a beta patch notes or whatever, a test build and throw it at, uh, you know, at Alpha Star or whatever AI that, you know, they, 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 they lease to, to do the work, um, and see what kind of, uh, developments it comes up with in terms of like the meta. But what that means too, though, is if those results are made public, then the AI would essentially dictate the meta instead of the, the professional players going through and actually finding out what actually works and what doesn't, finding new ways to to basically evolve the meta organically. So that's something that could actually change in the future. Like if we if we run this thing against a whole bunch of AI, the AI is basically gonna turn around and say, oh hey, like this is the meta now. <laughs> Do it or lose. <laughs> and that's pretty much gonna be it. So that's a little touch up on last week. Last week we were talking a little bit about it. We were all excited about it. It was great. It was it was crazy to watch and everything. And so just just to kind of reel it in a little bit, just a little bit, calm down. Now we know where we're at with that. The next follow up. See, we, uh, we, 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 uh, we follow, uh, we follow up on our stories because we want to make sure that, that, that everybody is well informed on this stuff. The next follow up here is actually on, and I'm going to need some of your guys' help on this here. C clean boots. Uh, I totally fucked up Clayton's name when I said that. I'm trying to hit the cough and really fuck that up. You have no idea how I said that your name. Uh, next up, this is uh, following up on the WoW uh, 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 progression for the newest tiers or the newest uh, you know content patch, or whatever. Um, right now, where they're at is they're uh, currently, and maybe even like right now on Twitch, they're currently duking it out with uh, uh, Jana Proudmore, who is the final boss in this in this uh, this tier. It's a surprise for those of you guys who didn't know. I didn't know, actually, until yesterday. And I was just like, oh, is it Jaina? Pro okay, wow, that's cool. <laughs> I did not know that. So, But we did talk about how they try to take advantage of uh, faction transfers to get a, piece of, uh, get a number of pieces of gear for their, uh, uh, for their crew. And when I say their, uh, I mean specifically Limits, uh, the, the best North American raiding guilds, number one NA raiding guilds. Um, as spoilers, oh man. Uh, and what ended up happening was they transferred over to get, to, to get this gear and then they got it. And then they were like, all right, cool. Now, now we're going to transfer it back. And so what happened when they transferred back and I'll read this to you guys here is they got a little message from, uh, from the GMs or from a GM. And it says, this is specialist game master Paramac. I hope you are well. Thank you for taking time to chat with me today. The refund for the Hunter's Faction change has been started. Oh, that's right. There's a refund he processed on it. That's pretty funny. This is this is just one example of this. Uh, the Hunter is processing back to the Horde and the balance should become available on the account within the next 24 hours. This is all normal. This is all normal. And then it says, it has come to our attention that some players in top level guilds have faction changed to the Alliance to take part in Warfronts and complete quests to receive new top level gear not yet available for the Horde and are then requesting refunds for those faction changes. After investigating the characters you mentioned, we noticed that they received this gear during their time in the Alliance faction. In the spirit of our core value of play nice, play fair, we have removed these items in the process of refunding your faction change. Due to this, I did not restore the pre—I did restore the previous boots your character was using, and they can be found within your character's inventory. I did also empty any other items waiting in the mailbox into your character's bag bags. Take care. <laughs> it's just, just busted, just busted. Like trying to get a refund on that. Like that's 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 something else. <laughs> but but I mean, all the other things aside, with like why does this piece of gear exist on one side and not on the other? This is pretty fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> just try to be sneaky and get out of there. So, uh, what I've read, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, they limit is all back on Horde. They are raiding on Horde, uh, and they do not have the benefit of the the new pieces, I guess, right? Because they didn't actually weren't able to necessarily uh, faction transfer back with the pieces. Is that correct? Uh, is that correct, co-host? -co is that right? I feel like that's. I think it's like what I can find. That's pretty much the case. You can imagine like the forums are pretty fucking like. Like, like convoluted, it's kind of difficult to go and find information on there. And no one's talking about it because not a lot of people care about the world race for this kind of stuff. Um, it is, yes. All right, cool. Cool, cool. Uh, and so, and so, yeah, it's, and so basically, they did all that crazy stuff 
And now they they faction changed. Uh, they're they're all back on the horde. They're raiding right now. Uh, they are eight out of nine. All that's left is uh, is Proudmore. And uh, I care, damn it. Well, good. I'm glad some of you guys do. I figured some of you guys do because I started off with WoW doing this shit. And so some of you guys have been around since those days. So of course, of course. Uh, also, it's juicy drama. Just a little bit. It is, right? It's kind of juicy. People will try to pull shit like this. I'm going to faction transfer. I'm going to grab some new loot and I'm going to get a refund on it. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, and so, so, so right now... They, they are, they, they are, there's, they can potentially be the first, uh, actually get world first anyways, which is, which is awesome because if they get world first, then at least their, their faction transfer bullshit, um, won't be called into question because they didn't really benefit from it. Uh, also if they get world first, it'll show that Horde didn't need the Alliance gear in order to win. Uh, and also it'd be a win for NA, but methods also racing. And also apparently, uh, uh, there are some Chinese guilds that are raiding that are catching up. Is that right? Um, I guess they started a little bit later or something like that, but they're already like seven, nine. Uh, from what I've heard. Is they currently, uh, so yes, and currently one NA, NA guild is eight, nine is limit. Yeah. Three EU guilds are eight, nine. Two China guilds are eight, nine. Oh, so China, China's already up to eight, nine. Holy shit. One Korea guild is eight, nine. All these guilds are horde guilds. Taiwan brings up the rear with their top three guilds at three, nine, two alliance, one horde. Man, look at this. Look at this co-hosting right here. Holy shit. And they started two days later, but they also had the benefit of being able to watch uh, other people's streams and VODs and everything, which you know they were, obviously, um, because Method has been streaming it. And so they basically made all that stuff uh, um, public, all their, their their techniques and strats and all that good stuff. Uh, Limit, however, is not streaming it, as far as I know. There's actually, it's strange. I've seen, like, all of these, um, uh, uh, like, rumors that, like, Limit's getting banned for exploiting and all this stuff. And it's just like, what is happening? Like, none of this stuff is happening, as far as I could tell. Uh, all of their characters are active. Uh, their Twitter hasn't mentioned anything about it. I haven't seen a threat. It's just like, like there's like this weird like rumor mill of people that just want them to not succeed. Uh, <laughs> and by any means possible, as if starting a rumor is going to make it true. Let me see. We'll go and actually pull up WoW progress. It's funny because yesterday I was like, isn't there a site that actually tracks progress in WoW? I was so dumb. After I said it, I was like, son of a bitch. Why did I say that? Why did I say that out loud? That should be inner monologue shit. Anyway, so here it is. This is the, <laughs> this is the, uh, the site that tracks WoW progress, also known, also known as WoWProgress.com. Um, let's see, beyond that, beyond that, four NA guilds are seven, nine, all Horde. Eight EU guilds, seven, uh, seven Horde, one Alliance, and one China guild is seven, nine Horde. So how many, wait, how many in the top ten are Alliance? Just one, right? Like, well, actually, let's look at this thing here. Sorry. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess I guess that's it. So, there you go. Um, Alliance. One. Just one. I was looking at chat, not here. So, there you go. There it is. So, there's one. There's one alliance. And look at this. Hey, look at number 20. It's like their bookmark. They're bookending every, uh, every set of 10. So, <laughs> wow, Alliance sucks. <laughs> let's see. Next page. Oh, hey, there's another one. Look at this. Let's see. That's uh, five, uh, six. Six. There are six alliance guilds, uh, according to this here, in the top in the top fifty. Let's see, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen in the top one hundred. All right, so eighteen percent. Eighteen percent. That's that's pretty low. Uh, it, you know, it's funny when you look at when you look at that number and you say, oh yeah, eighteen percent. Okay, so one, one, five, whatever. Like that number sounds better than the first like that that's in the top 100 when you take that sample size of top 100 it doesn't look that bad it looks bad but it doesn't look as bad as what do we say like four in the top 50 or whatever which is like eight <laughs> percent like it looks pretty fucking bad and when you look and then you look at yeah then it basically scales up from there when you get down to like you know two in the top 20 and just one in the top 10 and it's just kind of like all right uh how many alliance guild are, guilds are actually racing? So that's a good question. That's a good question. Like, how many guilds are actually participating in the race? I don't know the answer to that, honestly. Uh, but uh, I'd, I'd imagine that it's probably less than uh, than Horde. Just give, just I mean, just given these numbers, really, just given these numbers, I'd, I can't imagine that it's any more than uh, uh, than that. Radar Eye has a better layout for this. Oh, well, uh, well, let me see here. Let me take a look. Let me pull it over here. This other side. Uh, Oh man, I can't read this. <laughs> Let's see. We'll, we'll pull it up here. My co-host said it was good. 
Let's see. Pull it up here. Uh, let's see. All runs leaderboard. We'll do that. No, that's not right. I think the problem is it probably has a better layout for this. But you know what? I have no idea how to use this like I never used this. So there it is. That's all we got for this anyways. <laughs> it does have pictures. It does have pictures. It might be better laid out, but I never used this site before. So while progress is easy, it just shows you the data. It just shows it to you right there on the front page. Uh, so that's it for that. By the time you watch this video, if you're watching it on YouTube or VOD, they might actually already be done. So this could be old ass news. Now, uh, Limit, Limit wasn't always in first place for the Race for World First, but they, they, they did pull ahead towards the end, though, so when I, like, towards, uh, um, like, they were the first one to down, uh, Boss 8, and maybe 7? I'm not sure, but, but yeah, I know it's close. It's definitely close, for sure, so we'll see. We'll see what's up, uh, but we got other news to talk about. We got other news to talk about. This is a good one. This is a, this is a juicy one. Oh, man, this is a good one. So, there's a little game called Metro. There's a, a franchise called Metro. And uh, some of you guys may have heard of the games Metro 20 whatever uh, and Metro whatever, right? So <laughs> Metro Exodus, uh, another, another entry into the, uh, into the Metro uh, franchise, was originally planned on being released on Steam on the 15th of February of, uh, of this year. So, you know, 15, so basically in two weeks. Unfortunately, though, they have made a plan, they have made a change uh, to those, uh, there's been change, changes in the plans here uh, to take it off of Steam and move it to Epic exclusively, exclusively. Uh, and there's this note that popped up here. Now this is a note from Steam, right, from Valve. It says, notice sales of Metro Exodus have been discontinued on Steam due to a publisher decision to make the game exclusive to another PC store. The developer and publisher have assured us that all prior sales of the game on Steam will be fulfilled will be fulfilled on Steam, and Steam owners will be able to access the game and any other future updates uh, or DLC through Steam. We think the decision to remove the game is unfair to Steam customers, especially after a long pre-sale period. We apologize to Steam customers uh, that were expecting to be able to uh, expecting it to be available for sale through the uh, February fifteenth release date, but we were only recently informed of the decision, give and given limited time to let everyone no so wow we've seen this before on a smaller scale i wish i could remember what it was N but we've I i've never seen uh steam or valve actually like react to it like actually post a note on it like we've seen like oh yeah it's gonna make it exclusive to like you know whatever other random platform or something um or gog or whatever and which is dumb because they still seem keys <laughs> but it's not like this. This is crazy. Yeah, it's a one. Yeah, it's only one year. I know it's only one year exclusive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you you guys know that this thing's gonna get bombarded with with negative reviews. So it's already fucked on uh, on the Steam side. So what the fuck? <laughs> My co-host is talking about random shit here. Uh, <laughs> and so so Metro is gonna be for sale uh, exclusively on uh, Epic. For the first year. So why did they take this? Why did they take this deal? Uh, they say that they took the deal for the rev share. Because it had a better rev share. Uh, they'll, be, they'll be taking in 80, 88% versus 70%, which is what they would get from Steam. Um, and so they said they did it for that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, in my opinion, that's a fucking lie. That is an outright fucking lie. They did not do it just for the rev share. The install base that they have, or that Valve already has on PC. Now, Epic has a pretty fucking significant install base, right? But it is not, it is, doesn't, it doesn't have the presence of a store that Steam has uh, in terms of like something that could turn around, it did basically turn into sales and make money for whatever game releases on that platform. Uh, so we already know they're gonna sell fewer copies. For, for sure, they're going to sell fewer copies uh, of Metro. I mean, like, it doesn't look, it doesn't, the reason why, too, is because it doesn't look like Fortnite. <laughs> they're putting it on the Fortnite platform, but they're, but it doesn't look anything like Fortnite. So people who play Fortnite are going to look at this, who don't know the Metro franchise, and they're going to be like, what is this shitty game? And they're not going to do anything with it. It's just dumb. It's dumb all the way around. So anyways, uh, the reason why these companies take these deals is because they want to, they, they're basically getting paid for exclusivity. We know this. This has always happened, right? They don't always disclose it. They're not going to say that. You know why? Because they will look like dicks. 
they'll look like dicks if they're like, oh yeah, like we took this deal because, you know, because uh, they're paying us to do it. Right. That's, 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 that's I think I want to say Phil Fish said that about Fez when he released it because it was like, wasn't that like exclusive to uh, uh, Xbox Live Indie, uh, Xbox Arcade, I think initially. It's been a while, so my data might be wrong there. Um, and I think he, he did disclose at some point in time that, you know, they got paid to basically put it on their platform or some shit like that. Anyways, so uh, this is basically the same case. But it's dumb because it's, it's fucking, it's Ep Epic is a PC-based platform, you know, storefront that is trying to compete with another PC-based platform. And they're doing it in, the, in this, the shittiest way because they're not competing with features. They're not feature matching. They're, they're doing it by trying to strong arm us into using their platform. And fuck that. <laughs> like, like, what the fuck? You gotta take a popular streamer to play it and then they're gonna get sales out of their butts. Oh, they're probably, yeah, but they're not gonna get as much as just they would, they would normally get on Steam. Stay, Steam, Steam or streamer sales is gonna amount to something for sure. But this is, I don't feel like this is the kind of game that's going to um, have any kind of longevity on Steam, or I'm sorry, on Twitch. To actually get that much traction uh, in sales, because I mean, a game like this, it'll have like three days, maybe. I'm sorry, well, three days of having any kind of traction on Twitch, and then everybody will forget that it even exists. And then I guess they're gonna try to double dip the next time it comes around on um, on Steam and try to get people to play it again. And people are gonna be like, okay, whatever. Yeah, Metro is st story based. Yeah, exactly, it's story based. So once once you know the story, once once you've watched it once, you know, like it dies. That's it. People who aren't interested in the story, it's gone. It's just, yeah, it's just, it's not going to be enough. Um, but, in, but going back to, going back to, uh, um, Epic, just, just, uh, very, like, I mean, just anti-consumer really. Like when, whenever there's, whenever competition happens in whatever industry you compete, you're supposed to compete by feature matching or coming up with a better features, make people want to come to your platform. That's what you're supposed to do. It's not supposed to work like, well, we'll just buy all this shit up. And then that'll be it. Steam didn't do that. Steam didn't didn't build a market by buying their competitors <laughs> and making exclusivity de deals. I, I'm fairly certain there has never been a game that was paid exclusive to Steam, let alone even exclusive to Steam. Right? In terms of like, uh, uh, in terms of like, by some kind of deal or something like that. Uh, but Epic's got money, and so. Epic's got money, and so they're going to uh, they're going to do whatever they can in order to keep that shit exclusive. Uh, I will never install the Fortnite launcher. I'll just go back to play. I know I have it installed. And I feel like I mean I have it installed because I play Unreal Tournament every once in a while. But now I'm just kind of super bummed about the whole thing, and I kind of would just be like fuck it, like fuck the new Unreal Tournament. We'll just play on UT99 and UT2K3 because that's like a dollar on Steam or something, and then we'll just do it that way. Um, back in my day, Steam only had yeah, CS, Half Life, and yeah, exactly. There's so many ideas and forcing to leave and release only on our store. What could go wrong? I exactly yeah, so much is gonna go wrong because they're not gonna get the sales. Oh, maybe 2K3 is not available on Steam. I think yeah, I think I maybe no, I don't think that's true. Um But I'm not saying I know that someone's gonna be like really defensive about about uh about Epic for some reason. Steam has their issues. Steam has problems, for sure. Uh Steam has issues, and um but I don't believe that a lot of what Steam does is is anti-consumer like Epic is doing. Epic is Epic is trying to do this. They try to do it like Origin. You know, Origin was like, oh yeah, Mass Effect 3, exclusive on Origin only, right? And Origin sucked when it came out. But now Origin actually isn't that bad, right? It's it's still not my it's still not my platform of choice because of the limited game selection, right? Uh, but Origin as a whole has improved tremendously over the years. Epic has nothing. <laughs> Epic, the Epic launcher has fucking nothing, guys. I, I made a list. I made a list of things it does not have, okay? Or let me see. It's a, it's a short list, but still, I want to read it out here if I can. Uh, what I put the list here? <laughs> uh, here we go. Yeah, okay. So, you can't play offline. No offline play. No social features. No, no like, chatting with your friends. Uh, no screenshots, no, which is like, okay, maybe, sure. Uh, no, no workshop, no achievements, no cloud saves, no support forums, no user reviews. There's nothing! It fucking has nothing! They literally give you the game, and then you leave. And that's it. Oh, but you can't play the game unless you're online. Sorry, but it's, it's, it's fucking, it's ridiculous. They're not enticing players and consumers with, uh, with features. 
They're see, they're actually they, like I said, they're trying to strong arm you guys until they use the platform, and that's it. That's it. Oh yeah, this game is going to be you know free. Here's an example: Subnautica. Subnautica, which you could get, I think, on GOG. You could get the uh, uh, you could get the uh, um, the DRM free version on on, on GO, G, GOG or maybe it's GMG. Um, the Steam version will play offline. The Epic version that you guys all got for free if you sign up for it, uh, you cannot play offline. It's the same fucking game. It's the same fucking game. But you can't play offline on the Epic version, but you can play on the Steam version. So that, that should say a lot right there. Now, the developers are the ones that uh, enabled that feature, but it's not because they necessarily wanted to. Uh, it was because pretty much they had no choice, really. Uh, I mean, if you play Fortnite, then I'm sure you're probably stoked. You're like, cool, man. All my games are going to be on the Fortnite launcher. That's awesome. But, you know, but really, I think it's just kind of, it's just bullshit. Uh, let me say, I have some other stuff here to talk about on that, on that note here. Uh, some threads that came up. Reddit's pretty good at this. Uh, in r slash PC gaming, which is a million plus sub. Uh, oh God, why is it so fucking bright? <laughs> why? Uh, night mode on. Oh. All right, so there was actually a thread, and actually it basically states a lot of shit that we just talked about today. Uh, it says, can we please all boycott the Epic Game Store? It's full-on anti-consumer. It's just awful. Terrible security, terrible customer support. Uh, the games are more expensive due to Epic's regional pricing. You can't play games offline. Basically, it's all the shit that I just wrote out here, actually. No controller support, which, no controller support for the UI, but the games do support controllers because uh, we played Hades, actually, uh, not too long ago. Um, Incognito doesn't default to night mode era. Man, era, you're just easy to shoot down, boy. Uh, so Epic is good as Steam, but Steam will never compare to the Twitch game launcher. Oh man, I know. I forgot that they're fucking their game platform too. Uh, and I guess I guess we should go and throw Discord in the mix too, right? Yeah, go and throw Discord in there. You know the Discord game store. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, let's see. There's an article. I saw article I was on on Rock Paper Shotgun, uh, where they discuss also also a very bright white site. Uh, it's great that Epic is trying to compete with Steam, but they're going about it the worst way. And even these guys go through and they detail all the different things that Steam's doing to make it, uh, to basically make a hostile, a hostile gaming purchasing environment on, uh, on, I guess, I guess on PC. <laughs> uh, Patre Patreon will have its own game launcher. Dude, like Patreon supports so many games. Like there's so many like games, like, you know, like, like for example, VR titties. That's on, that's on Steam or on uh, Patreon. They can make a platform and sell that shit. They should just make a platform. They're, they are, wait, hold on a second. They are the platform that sells that. Whoa, hold on. Uh, I see. Uh, I'm a console player, so I don't know what is happening. Oh, well, lucky you. And also not lucky you, but yeah. Uh, so Steam Origin, you play GOG Galaxy, Twitch, Discord, Epic. Did I miss somebody? Uh, Desur is dead. Um, oh, Battle.net. Yeah, Battle.net. Uh, Bethesda Launcher. Bethesda. And there is another one. I want to see that. GOG is on there already. Um... Yeah, there's, I mean, there, there's so many, I don't mind the competition. I don't mind the, the competition is fine. You know, like in some cases, you know, it's like, for example, G in GOG, it's like you get DRM free. It's like, that's awesome. That's, that's a benefit. Uh, but the ones where it's like, but like Bethesda, right? It's like, oh yeah, cool. You could buy Bethesda games and Battle.net. Oh, cool. You can buy Battle.net games on there. It's like, all right, all right. <laughs> but it's kind of like what's happening with TV. Right, we're gonna pull this with this. This page moves. We'll have this one up. Uh, it's kind of like what's happening with TV, where you know Netflix and Hulu got super big, right? And then, oh god, Facebook. Does it have? I mean, Facebook is like a platform in and of itself. Uh, anyway, so um, with Netflix and Hulu getting as big as it as as it has, uh, they have you have like these like CBS and ABC and Fox and uh, HBO and Showtime and Cinemax. They all have their own fucking apps now. They all have their own streaming apps because they all, they, they, they see that there's money made here and they're like, you know what? I'm going to build an app just to give people, you know, just to, you know, for people to watch our shows instead of like going through these, these distributors. Uh, and so it, what ends up happening is when you want to watch all the shows that you used to watch on TV, you end up paying like a shitload of money across a bazillion fucking services. Like when, what, what, for example, like, and, and, and I'm one of the ones too, like when, uh, when Game of Thrones season fires up. I fire up the, uh, the HBO Go subscription. <laughs> so, but so that just adds to my list of like small services that I pay for to watch whatever shows that I want to watch. 
CBS All Access, exactly. Went from a time of having to install every game with CDs to needing to use each individual CD floppy. I need to use each individual CD floppy. Then we went to Steam and almost only Steam everything in one. Now we're turning to a time of having to boot up something specific for everything you want to use again. Yeah, it's true, huh? We we traded in we traded in loading a CD like a boot CD <laughs> uh, in every um, you know for every other game that you want to play to like you said like just. Now you have to load up whatever, a like play Origin, all these other things. It's ridiculous. It's really, really, really ridiculous. Um, let's see, wish I could get HBO Go in Canada. Oh, well, sorry. Uh, <laughs> a boot, yes, a boot floppy. Boot floppy. Let's see, what else is there? Uh, let's see, paper shows it's a pirate's life for me. So here's the thing, though. Yeah, here's the thing. Uh, the, more, the more difficult, the whole reason why piracy really existed uh, is because getting games for some folks was difficult, right? Either the prices are way overpriced, especially if you live overseas, uh, or, um, or whatever. So it's like, so, and, and also, and also because, you know, people wanted to test the game, right? So they wanted to play without buying the game and there's no demo available. And since all these fucking games are coming out with no demo and all these paid reviews, you don't know who to trust. So what do you do? You pirate the game to check it out. And if it's good, then you buy it. If, 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 <laughs> Oh, wait, hold on a second. Uh, and not to mention the ISPs are on and on it too. So they charge data caps to also cash in on the streaming. Yes, exactly. Yes, to go back to the other thing. Absolutely. Uh, for some of you guys that have like really shitty ISPs because there are shittier ones than uh, Comcast. Surprisingly. Surprisingly. Um, do I need to bring up the Steve Jobs talks about piracy and, pir piracy and how piracy was a response to a lack of competition or innovation in the music marketplace? I think it applies to other companies. It's true. It's true when... Um, uh, and Napster was a big thing, obviously, for a while, and we were able to download music from everything, and then Audio Galaxy 3000 or whatever, and all these LimeWire and all these other sites, start, all these other things started spinning up uh, after um, after Napster went down, and then the iTunes store shows up, and it's like, hey, you could buy all these songs for a dollar, and it's like, well, hold on, it's like a dollar is basically nothing. I could just buy the song and I'll own it forever. That sounds pretty awesome. I can afford a dollar. Sure, let's do a dollar. And so that basically took off. It was huge. It was fucking massive. And so here we now now here we are again. It's like okay, are they gonna make it? Are they really gonna make it that difficult for me to just fucking download a fucking game? I have to download the Epic Launcher. How about this? Instead of download the Epic Launcher, I'm just gonna pirate the game and check it out myself. And if it sucks, I'll just delete it. If it's good, then maybe I'll buy the game and then not install it. <laughs> not install Origin. Just buy it. Then support the developers or whatever. Like still, it's 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 gonna happen. We're gonna, they're gonna drive us right back into fucking pirating again. Uh, into pi pirating yard. Uh. And yeah, this is, it's just, it's the circle of life, I guess, in the games industry. It's silly. Um, so anyways, yeah, Epic, Epic is just, uh, doing it wrong, you know? And, and on top of everything else, like, you know, apparently the, uh, the Epic launcher also does a whole lot of reading what it is that you're doing on your PC when you're not actually using it. So that's, that's a pretty rough one too. Uh, like serious, that's pretty shitty. <laughs> uh, the DRM is only impacting legitimate owners too. Oh, of course, of course, of course. We know this. We, we yeah, we we've covered this across many many an industry. Talked about this kind of shit. Uh oh yeah, Agent Pi. Uh, promise repealing net neutrality would increase investment in all major ISPs. Yeah, that was a lie. We knew that was a fucking lie. Man, what a what a fucking puppet that guy was. Jesus, he's still around, right? Like doing shit, probably. Anyways, so speaking of bullshit <laughs> or something. Uh oh man, this doesn't have dark mode either. Man, not being logged in on this kind of stuff really hurts. Um. Speaking of uh, bullshit, yes, yeah, bullshit. So, uh, last week or so, we had, uh, I saw a tweet uh, from Strippin. You guys know Strippin, right? Big Daddy Strippin. So, Strippin, Strippin tweets out and he says, I'll read it out to you. I thought people were pretty vocal recently about their displeasure of other broadcasters being advertised on their channels. So, why the fuck are my viewers seeing Pokemane ads? Why the fuck? And so I was like, whoa, I hadn't seen this. And so I went and I watched, I went to his stream and sure enough, I was, I was issued this ad. And at the end, I pulled it up. I took a screenshot and it said live on Pokemon's Twitch on Friday, January 25th, 4 to 6 PM. The bring it all Fortnite stream hosted by Pokemon. This ad supports stripping, which was pointed out to me that this is a, <laughs> this is perfect. This is the, this is just the fucking perfect. Oh, this stopped already. This is the perfect gift response here. Uh, so yeah, Pokemon is a streamer on Twitch. I don't know if you've heard of her. Uh, she's, she's a streamer on Twitch. That's, I don't really know anything else about her. Uh, but she apparently has ads playing on other, uh, on other, um, streamers, uh, uh, feeds. Now, 
we just talked about this with uh, uh, with Ninja, the the whole New Year's Eve ad debacle thing that was happening, and Twitch was like, "Yo, hold us accountable on that kind of stuff." You guys, yeah, just hold us accountable on that. We want to make sure that we support streamers and all that. So whenever we mess up, hold us accountable. And so we were like, cool, we're going to hold you accountable. And they're like, all right. All right, run that next ad. <laughs> they just fucking jump right into it, man. They jump, they're just like, yeah, sure, whatever. A month later, why not? The next big thing, yeah, we're just, what, what are they going to do? They're going to they're gonna hold us accountable? Is that what they're going to do? You better be careful not to say this shit on Twitch. Which channel just disappear like that? Uh, yeah, it's it's it feels it feels like bullshit. It does. It really does. They they've not given us any reason to like to 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 believe them that they actually legitimately uh want to you know they're, they're oh yeah well we shouldn't do that so we you know, hold us accountable and all this whatever whatever there right they're not giving us any reason to believe that so uh so <laughs> so this email came out. And I'll read it to you guys uh, here again, and then we're going to go through and uh, do an analysis walkthrough here with, uh, with my buddy Justin Wong. So it says, this is from Twitch. I got this email too, by the way. So it says, since December, there have been two instances of advertisers on Twitch we believed helped spotlight uh, existing, excite, sorry, exciting events taking place on site with some of our creators. We recognize those good intentions cause concern across our broader Twitch creators that these advertisers may drive their audience elsewhere, and that we had unintentionally created a potentially negative impact for, with our efforts. We always want you to hold us accountable. Oh, there it is again. Uh, and we're glad you are here. We removed the most recent ad for early Friday and will avoid running advertisements in the future for on-site events and or creators that potentially drive your viewers to other channels. We'll continue to invest in finding ways to support all creators on Twitch and look forward to helping uh, to you helping us do that. Uh, thank you for your feedback, Twitch. Now, I, I saw a tweet that came out that was related to this where someone was like, if you're worried about an advertisement uh, an advertiser is taking away users from like your viewers, then you're not a good enough streamer. And I think that's the, that's like such a biggest kiss ass fucking like cop out like ever. It's like, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind it's kind of like, uh, when people say, uh, well, if you don't do anything wrong, if you're not breaking the law, then what's wrong with a little invasion of privacy? It's the same fucking thing. Like, no, there's, there's, <laughs> There's some issues there <laughs> that, that, you know, you can't just be like, well, just don't do anything wrong. It's like, okay, sure. Like, that's not how it works. And so Justin Wong here. <laughs> yeah, the, here, here's your, here's your, uh, your bullshit PR response to English translator, Blue Cab. I got it right here. So this is Justin Wong. Justin Wong is the ex-VIP of, actually, it says right in this fucking thing. Uh, ex-VIP ex for partnerships. He doesn't have VIP, or not VIP, VP, Vice President of Partnerships, Esports, and Community Social Influencer Marketing. Uh, marketing teams. He was Forbes 30 under 30 for games, uh, and he no longer works at Twitch uh, because, you know, they were letting a bunch of people go, mentioned the old guard and all that good stuff for whatever reason. I have no idea why he left, right? Let's just say he doesn't work there anymore. Now, he is uh, probably one of my favorite follows on on Twitter, Twitter uh, because 90% of the time, he is an incredible shit poster. Just, just so good. Just the best shit poster. Uh, and then, and then he fills in all the gaps of shit posts with these really great, like, in-depth looks at some of these things because he speaks their language. So, he says, he goes through and he kind of goes through every step here. And we're going to go through some of this shit here, right? So, it says, uh, so, company-wide Twitch comms go through legal and C-level executive approval. So, the resulting word choice is deliberate. This non-apology is short but fascinating because it inadvertently reveals several failings behind the scenes. Join me on a fun journey through over-analysis land. And so he basically breaks down each piece where he, like, he shows the piece and then he says, just as it says, since December, there have been two instances of advertising. So he says, we believed how Spotlight implies Twitch had an active role in approving both ads ahead of time. And they approved the second ad despite what happened the first time with Ninja. Either they intention they're intentionally obtuse or it slipped through the clearly inadequate process. Number three, this is a classic, this is classic corporate gaslighting non-apology. We recognize your your concern about our good intentions. It's weak and insulting. This further shows Twitch knew nothing about the events. I uh, sorry, knew about the events beforehand, knows ads effectively drive viewership and actively approve the ads. Number four, this is a huge commitment I doubt Twitch is prepared to keep. It's so broad it must be it must be an oversight or an empty promise. This is where he says, we always want you to hold us accountable, blah 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 blah, right? He says they won't run ads for anything that potentially drives your viewers to other channels. Does this include esports like LCS or OWL? Uh, what about E3 or TwitchCon? 
And five, this is over the part where he says, we always want you to hold us accountable again. He says, alternatively, we will avoid running ads. Could suggest they still do it sometimes because it's worth it, but they feel bad about it afterwards. Much like I avoid eating too much pizza or watching too much TV. Number six, <laughs> this sentence is terrible. It's a throwaway platitude stuff with weasel words. It says, we will continue to support all creators. It's a little too presumptuous, but continue to invest in finding ways to support is just awkward. I know there's not much depth here, but I still hate it. And number seven, takeaways. Twitch knows ads, ads drive viewership. St streamers can't buy ads. Twitch was actively involved in both ads that encouraged viewers to visit other channels. Twitch heard the negative feedback about the first ad. Knowing this, Twitch still ran the second one. And he's right. This is, I mean, this is his over analysis land uh, journey. Uh, it it reads it reads correctly to me. It totally reads correctly correctly to me. Like this is this is about what what I gather from this. Uh, and he is somebody who would know better than I did better than I do because he helped write some of this shit back in the day. So yeah, uh, no different different Justin, um, different Justin Wong actually. So so yeah, it's 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 concerning. It's concerning, and you know like. I, I I don't want I, I don't want I don't want ads to be shown at all, right? But you know, obviously we got to pay the bills. Uh, but having ads that like drive you to other channels, you know, there's always a small percentage that might just be like, oh yeah, I'll go check that out. And what and what if you go over there and there's an incentive for you to stay? Then I did actually lose somebody. Yeah, you like me, sure, but you never actually came across the other channel organically, you know. And so so maybe that person was 0.1 percent more entertaining than I was. It's like okay, well I ended up losing that person. I wouldn't have lost that person. If I didn't, if they didn't see that ad and that's the fucking point, right? I would have had an opportunity to continue to improve as a streamer, but instead Twitch swooped in a little early with an ad that swept somebody away before I had an opportunity to improve. And that is what the problem is. That is the problem. So, so this is why it's concerning because we may not see another one of these ads maybe in the next six months, but it's going to happen again. The next big event, whatever the next big event is, who knows? Who knows what it is? But the next big event, uh, we'll probably see something like this. Ugh. Yeah, it's, it's disappointing is what it is. I, I like you, but this other guy was giving away free PewDiePie merch. What? Show me who he is. <laughs> I, need, I need some merch. I need, I need some more shirts. Like, I like this. I literally, I'm literally wearing a black shirt. Look at it. I'm, it's, it's, it's a plain black shirt. There is nothing on this shirt. Oh, and it's inside out. Okay, well. <sighs> it's just a plain black shirt, guys. Yeah, see, this, this is where I'm at right now. Uh, <laughs> I bought these in like, I bought like a five pack of these things. It's pretty handy to wear underneath. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Next up. Next up. Are we done talking about, about Twitch and promises? Got to do laundry? A little bit. I know. It's, I've, I've, I've been traveling a lot in this past like few weeks. And I, seriously, I have so much laundry that's still in bags from my trips right on the other side of this computer here. I need to go through that kind of shit. Uh, next up, this is probably the biggest news of the week, really. Uh, the biggest news of the week. You guys, you guys, you guys ever, you guys ever, um, uh, this, this might, hold on a second. Uh, this might be something that you guys probably never come across, though. So just give me that. You guys ever heard of a game called Cube World? Maybe. It's a little game that came out a little while ago. They're kind of slow on updates. But yeah, Cube World world right no right all right well so it's just a little game it's got a little bit of traction it's got a few a few fan world to fuck i don't know how to i don't know how, how do i pronounce world without you hearing w-h-i-r-l-d l-e-d come on <laughs> world anyways so it's uh uh intro so the developer uh, 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 uh the loan developer has been working on it off and on, and he posts updates every once in a while. And by every once in a while, I mean like, what, like once a year or something? The game has been in development for probably like, I mean, more than six years, right? Because the last time the game got an update was like five years ago or something. Uh, but still, it's not even available for sale. And that's something that I need to point out because some, some people actually don't remember this part. The game has not been for sale since several weeks after it first gained traction. Uh, so you can't even buy it. And so this hype, this hype, this is like Half-Life 3 level hype that this guy has surrounding this game. So he posted an update 
with some screenshots. Now, I don't really care much about the screenshots. I want the game just like everybody else wants the game. I really do. But uh, I want to show that I only t I have three screenshots where I went. Is it really Half-Life 3 level? It's pretty fucking close, dude. It's pretty close because I feel like the Half-Life 3 folks have pretty much conceded that it's not going to happen, right? But right now, the Cube World folks are still under the under the, the impression that it's going to happen. So we've not quite gotten to the point where it's so it's not going to happen. <laughs> The hype is too strong. It's never going to happen, right? So we're not quite there yet. We're like, Half-Life users are like over the hump, right? We're still going up the one side here. Uh, does anybody really know about this game, though? Yeah. Like, I mean, like, I I played a lot when it first came out. We have a bunch of videos, actually, where we were playing it with, uh, it was like Shizzle, uh, Shizzle, Josh, uh, Squish, and uh, a few others actually kind of rotating it out. It was great. It was a lot of fun. Half-Life 3 will happen. It was not going to happen. Um... So yeah, he made an announcement and uh, he basically, when? <laughs> Update in two more years. Yeah, exactly. And it's just basically updates. Oh, you need to activate Shrines of Life in order to be able to resurrect there. Furthermore, you could teleport to activated Shrines. Uh, I mean, what is this? I added flight masses to every vi village. So here you could buy flight points, allowing you to travel on an eagle to more distant locations. The further away, the more expensive. And here it is. So there's clearly a bunch of, uh, are you still remember your account on their site? Oh shit, I gotta, I gotta find mine. I don't even know. That was like, that was like, 10 emails ago uh, <laughs> can it take you to azeroth no no but maybe maybe once they add the uh once he adds workshop support uh maybe then it will uh they'll be able to do weird shit like that it's coming soon guys uh anyway so i didn't necessarily want to show you this because i'm sure you've already heard of this right because once this happened my phone was fucking blowing up i woke up i woke up and i had just notifications a scroll of notifications and I thought, I thought, I thought there was like an, an attack or something like that somewhere or like an earthquake or something crazy. No, it was because there's an updated cube. Yeah. You heard about cube world. Exactly. No, seriously. That was my, that was like discord, Twitter, everything was blown up. Fucking Facebook. One of you fucks message me on Facebook. All right. <laughs> okay. This shit is serious. Uh, and so I'm pretty sure probably a lot of you guys heard this, but what I did was I jumped on, uh, <laughs> I jumped in their discord. And uh, I didn't. I didn't get a MySpace message. You're right. I didn't get a MySpace message. Uh, I jumped in their Discord and I scrolled back because I really, I really, really, really wanted to see what the official, the official uh, uh, Cube World Discord looked like when the game went when those uh, tweets came out. So I'm actually going to preload some of these here. I only have three. I wish I had more, but let me tell you, it took a long time. It took a long time to scroll back to. Uh, to the point to where they actually uh, uh, everybody was made aware of this uh, of this release, and so I thought I thought it was cute. <laughs> like here's here's the first thing we saw. So it says like check out Wally's tweet, da 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 da, and it's like here we go again. Oh shit! Just just the fucking just the hype everywhere, and just like just what the fuck again? Holy fuck! Ah, another, and and I'm, it was like there were seconds not even seconds between some of these posts another one another one another one uh and then this spam was everywhere it was just it was just insane it was just i wish i'd got more more pictures of it uh because i didn't realize i was going to show you guys this but i really wanted to show you because i thought it was interesting to see kind of like this is like the core group of people having a real time just panic attack response to uh uh to you know, these 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 posts coming out and just i'm telling you guys i was scroll i was scrolling i did that shit you know where you where you hit the little clicker and it goes and then it's like okay now i could free just like free roll my mouse i was sitting there like just scroll up uh, yeah scroll <laughs> fucking forever man and it just kept going it was crazy it was crazy how much hype from the uh was just pouring out of that place Cautious optimism. No such thing. No such thing at all. So anyways, yeah. So uh, well, Wally posted some Cube World updates. And we'll, we'll, we'll check back in on this story in 18 months. Next up. Some of you guys are still playing Fallout 76. If you haven't, if you have not. Listen, if you have not started playing Fallout 76. And you want to pick it up for cheap. 
And by cheap, I mean free. All you have to do is just slide on over to, uh, to Germany and they have a deal where you can get Fallout 76 for free when you buy a used PS4 controller. That's a fucking slamming deal right there. That says a lot about your game, too. Holy shit. So it says GameStop Germany obviously can't wait to get rid of their stock of Fallout 76 copies quick enough, where they've taken to, they, where they've taken to giving them away for free when a customer's buy, customers buy a used PS4. You know what? You could probably talk them into giving you a free copy of the game when you buy anything from the store. You're like, hey, I'll, I'll buy this, like, Clarence Minecraft Creeper plushie or keychain for a dollar. They'll be like, here's a copy of Fallout 76. <laughs> it's like, yeah, all right. I was like, oh, look at this. Oh, you bought, you bought, a, uh, you bought some uh, sunglass, sunglass uh, uh, sleeve. Sure. All right. Here's your copy of Fallout 76 with that. There you go. Yeah. Oh, you bought, you bought some, uh, some wet naps or something. It's like, sure. Here's a copy of Fallout 76. Uh, I'm amazed, but no, Bethesda doesn't have to approve that. That's the thing. Like this isn't, this is, this is controlled by the, uh, by the store. Uh, on store level, so they they can decide how they want to get rid of their stock because their bottom line that gets impacted, uh, not necessarily the store, but the but the division and everything. So it's not so while there is manufactured agreed pricing on things for certain items, this is this is they actually bought this stock, they own this stock. So Bethesda already made the money off of these purchases. They're basically just getting rid of the shit because they can't sell it any other way. And any space they're taking up on their inventory uh, on the floor is money lost because no one's buying the game. Man, instead of fries, you know, instead of fries, do you want Fallout seventy six with that? <laughs> Would you like to Fallout seventy six your six size your your meal for free? Yeah, man, yeah, yeah. Change for a dollar. Here's a copy of Fallout seventy six. Dude, there's so many, there's so many, so many things uh, with this, and it's just it's just hilarious. Here's the sign here too. If those of you guys who are uh, uh, who who speak. Or at least read German. Uh, and I'm take I'm I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and say that 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 the, this website is not lying. That's what this says. Um, do any of you guys actually read this? Where's Nkadi? Doesn't he read this shit? Uh, but yeah, there it is. Eralt beim Kauf eins gebrochten PS4 controllers. I know that one. That means PS4 controllers. Uh, right there. Fallout seventy six. That means Fallout seventy six. Gratis. Gratis is free, so there you go. Oh, <laughs> there you go with purchase. There you go. See, so yeah, it says oh, what you just said. Buy a used controller to get for free. Yep, there you go. Oh, what does this say? Ob das gut ist. What is this? I'm curious. I, I really want to know what this says. Actually, hopefully it's something good. Come on, come on, dudes, come on. Ist is is. Hope that is good. Is everybody using controller for Fallout 76? Free just said Spanish with way more consonants. In the, that's just not good. <laughs> is it good? Oh. <laughs> okay, so he's asking. He's asking. I uh, hope that is good. Okay, wow. It, with a question mark at the end. Is this good? Yes, of course it's good. Are you kidding me? Oh man. So, oh, that's that's rough. That's rough. But that's the current state of Fallout 76. I know you guys are wondering about how the, how that game was doing. Uh, let's see in other news. I got a message from a buddy of mine and he was like and he was like, oh my god Sushi dragon has got 14,000 people watching and I said who's Sushi dragon because I knew who he was but not his name uh, And then you guys posted this link you guys uh, posted this link in uh, in discord earlier today And I watched it and I was like I, I've seen this guy's earlier work But my god But my god has this gotten insane. I'm gonna play this for you. This is this is the sushi dragon. This is another uh, uh, this is another streamer. Oh my god, I'm showing you another streamer on my stream. Don't please don't leave me for him, guys. <laughs> but he's showing us what it's like to chew five gum. Here, let's take a look at this video right here. We're gonna go full screen for this bitch. Oh man, you guys don't even know. You guys don't even know. Back, 
Oh man! <laughs> it's so good! It's so amazing! <laughs> what the fuck? I can't handle it! Holy fuck! That's it. That's it. That's it. There you go. There's a good pause right there. That's wow. Wow. <laughs> Why you give me cancer? Just like that. Just like that. That is sorry. So from a production standpoint, I've seen how AJ does his setup, right? You guys know AJ. Uh uh I we we you know he's well, we're this community. Hopefully you guys know AJ. Um Amorio Amor Amorio Moroyo Yankee. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, he has this Japanese, um, uh, what is it called? Like a Japanese, uh, 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 variety show style of stuff. Well, yeah, not anymore. I know, I know. I just saw the thing earlier. He changed from that. But, but he was one of the original, uh, variety show stuff where he basically does crazy effects and everything, um, with, with, you know, with, 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 with basically layers and layers on an X split and random effects and triggering them and all that stuff. It was really, really cool. Uh, another one was the French Stallion. The French Stallion does this as well, where he basically just goes overboard on like all the crazy things and quirks and things that you could uh, rig inside of XSplit and, and OBS and everything. And this shit is super interesting. This guy, however, takes it to the fucking next level by a lot with this crazy bullshit here. Look at the fucking explosions, man. What the fuck? It's crazy. It's just, it's absolutely mind-blowing how much shit goes into this. And he triggers it all. He's got keyboards on his arms, dude. He's got, it's like a power glove, but for like PC users. It's just fucking power glove, that shit. Da, 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 da. Man, just absolutely wild. So, <laughs> he is using an expo. Yeah, he has sound clips on those. Yeah, he has got a bunch of shit on that. Uh the chat all falls to the ground seizing. I know, it just, just, just start foaming at the mouth. Uh, I don't think you can play games on it, I'm not sure. Uh, that's not like, no, dude, that's live. That's live. I, was I not clear on that? I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a clip. That's a clip from his, from his feed. That's his shit right there. We'll go to watch full video. I'll show you guys. Like, let me just, just go, let me go and do this. Let me go and pause this here. We'll just fast forward a little bit to see what else he's doing. Look at this shit. This is just, some, just another just random point. I'm just going to go pick some random point. Right? Let's choose another one here. Oh, this is, oh, this is, I guess, where he's filming. <laughs> in his garage. What the fuck? No, that's, that's a green screen. <laughs> Look, he's got all this crazy shit, man. Look at this nonsense. It's wild. Let's fucking go. Wow, I'm glad I muted that right there. Well, there it is. That's, <laughs> that was the, what the fuck? <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's basically, um, uh, yeah, just, just some insane, insane uh, production value on this. He threw a burrito at it later on. Oh, thanks. Okay, so it is a, it is real. All right, I didn't believe it because it was like, there's no way. So it is real. He threw a burrito at it to prove it otherwise. All right. Uh, man, I know. Yeah, time to sell up your game, Ninja. Seriously. All right. Uh, unfortunately, though, I have no, I have new, uh, no, no new, uh, Soldier Boy news uh, this week. I know that's become a main, you know, mainstay, uh, a recurring segment on the show. And I wish I had something else to tell you, but unfortunately, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't even bother looking for anything new because it just just nothing happened with that. So I'm sorry. No Soldier Boy news this week. Maybe next. Maybe next week. I know Sony ain't gonna do shit. Who's next? Microsoft ain't gonna do shit. Yeah. Yeah. Here it comes. Here it comes. He's been quiet, Mister Boy. Mister Boy. Ah. <sighs> So, yeah, so uh, we'll check back in next week and see what's going on with that. But that's pretty much it for this week. Sega ain't gonna do shit. Who else is gonna go out? Epic ain't gonna do shit. Please, God. Please, God. Make, please, Soldier Boy, make a Fortnite ripoff. Please, please. I want to see him go after Epic and just watch Tencent just shit down his throat on stream and not get banned for it because they could do that shit. It's fucking crazy. Another, another one. Another one. All right, guys. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> Valve ain't gonna do shit. So go ahead and get your subscribe to PewDiePie's in because we're done with the show. Thank you so much. My name is Mike B. You can follow me on twitter.com slash aka Mike B right here on twitch.tv slash aka Mike B. You can follow these guys 
right here at twitch.com TV slash AK Mike B. Thank you so much, guys, for backing me up on today's episode. I did not talk about the Resident Evil 3 remake because I'm not even done with whatever the Resident Evil thing that I started playing this week. Jeez, thank you so much for that new sub, Trist. See ya!